Building on our last tutorial, we're now going to look at the idea of developing a bit more understanding of the use of the pen tool. To that extent, we're going to apply that to a bit of tracing. So what I need to do is I need to place an image in my Illustrator file. So I'm going to go File and Place. Then I'm going to go to my resources. So I've got a screenshot of some of the typographic collages that we made earlier this year. So I'm going to go place. And what you do is you click and drag that image into your Illustrator document until it's the size that you want. Now what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to move around this image and I don't want this image to move. But equally, I want to be able to trace this image and see where I'm going. So to that extent, what I want to do is I want to start off by changing the opacity of this image. So you can see up here, I've got the image opacity option. So I can start to just modify the opacity of that, enough for me to see. What I also want to do now is to make sure that doesn't move around. So I'm going to press Command and 2. And that means now that if I try to move that image, it stays put. And that's going to make my life a lot easier. We're then going to zoom in. So I'm going to focus on maybe this shape to start with. So I'll start with a pen tool. And I'm going to move from one position to another position. And now what I want to think about is how do I cons construct this curve? So it's a good idea to think about a point on the curve where it changes direction. So I'm going to click and hold my mouse key down here. And now I'm going to start to pull this shape up. Until I've, as much as possible, got that shape in place. Now, this is one of the things you need to remember about Illustrator is that whatever you selected last time as your fill and your stroke down here, will automatically be applied. Now that can be quite frustrating, particularly when you're trying to trace something. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by clearing the decks. And rather than having a white fill, we're going to have a no fill. And rather than having this rather thick red line, I'm going to return that back to black and I'm going to make that stroke value much thinner. I might just make it a little bit large just so I can see it. That's better. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've obviously constructed this line and the curve here is not too bad. But the curve down here, as you can see, is probably a bit, um, a bit too high. So as I clicked and I created an anchor point here, I can now start to modify that curve a bit more with the use of the handlebars. Up here, I need to modify that shape a little bit more. So it's a little bit of fine tweaking until I've managed to, you know, construct a shape here. Now that I've constructed this, I now need to use the pen tool to define this shape. So again, I'm now going to click and now I'm going to move in this direction. Until I've got fairly close to that position. And then I'm going to bring this down here. So what I've now got is two lines. Again, if I come to the direct selection tool and now click on this shape, you can see again, I've got the handlebars, which enables me to subtly tweak that particular point in space. If you feel that you need to modify the shape a bit more, then when you hover over this line and you click on it, you can now add a new anchor point. You've got to be careful you don't add too many anchor points. 
into your shape because you can then quite, sort of quite easily lose some of the qualities you're trying to achieve. So that enables me to start moving that. And then because I've now got a new set of handlebars, I can start to tweak this shape a bit more. As you can see with the additional add-on of that um, anchor point in there, I've lost some of the sort of smoothness of my curve. So again, I'm going to undo and undo again and then think about how I might be position that better in the first instance. If I now hover over those two shapes and I place a fill on, you can see that I've filled that shape. But what I've got down here is a gap. If I change the stroke value, you can see that the stroke goes around here, but it doesn't fill that point. So I'm just going to now draw a point between here and here. And now you can see if I do the same thing, so I now hover over that and changed. I've now completed the whole shape. Once I've got that shape, I can now move that shape around. And now I've got a shape that I can start to modify. We'll come over to another shape. So again, when you're looking at a shape to trace, you've got to kind of break it down. You've got to think to yourself, where is the best starting point? So if I click in here and I click down there, how can I tweak that line until I match it? Where's the best place to join at this point before I can match it? Again, here, I should have perhaps hit a high point. Now, again, because I've already got down here the fill and the stroke selected, it's better for me to start again. So in other words, if I click on there, if I get rid of the fill, I make the stroke a thinner color. And then... I delete that and start again. I've then got this reset option. So that first movement between here and here worked fine in terms of me pulling into the direction. Really what I need to do is to break that line. So I'm just gonna press J for the moment and J sort of cuts me off. If I now start from this new position and come down here, I can now start to tweak that into place. Again, if I hit J, so it's no command J, it's just simply J, I can then start again into a new position here, add on. This becomes more or less a straight line. This becomes more or less a straight line. As I come down here, I want to think about where that curve sort of levels off. So I think in this point here, is a good place to start. Then I can move to another position, come into this point where it curves around, again start to tweak that shape, come around to the other side, come up, back again, again just moving those Bezier tools around, hit J again to stop my shape, before I then pick up this point, back to here, and then finally join those two points. And now I've got a shape that I can fill. So again, if I come down here and apply a fill, you can see I've got a fill color. If I come up to the top, I can get rid of completely my outline. So that I've just got this shape now. Once again, I've got a shape. I can then start to play around with the configuration of those shapes. And I can play around with the order of those shapes. So your next task is to experiment with the idea of developing an understanding of the pen tool by tracing some of your typographic experiments.